On today's episode, we have a very special guest. Yusuke Nagano, a karate coach in Tokyo and sensei of the Karate Dojo Waku YouTube channel, is with us to talk about the practices of teaching traditional Shotokan Karate in Japan. So, for the viewers who might not be familiar with your teaching your channel, you teach Shotokan in Tokyo. Can you tell us a little bit about the historical significance of the school? Sure. Um, the school that I coach at is um, called Keo Mita Karate Kai. I think in English it would be Keo Mita Karate Club or something like that. Um, it was the, the first, um, I guess, the uh, karate school in mainland Japan. Uh, I think a lot of you guys might know about Gichin Funakoshi has brought uh, Shurite from Okinawa to Tokyo in the 1920s. And he started teaching to the elites first. Um, so Keio is a university in Japan and it's one of the, uh, the, the good schools um, in Tokyo. So he started um, teaching karate in uh, Keio University and it's been going on since 1925. I forgot the exact year, but <laughs> it has a pretty long history. And um, there's a university at the top and then there are high schools and middle schools that are connected. And I am from a high school um, from that or, or, or from that school system. So I, you know, as a, I guess a, somebody who has finished his uh, or finished or I guess graduated the high school, I go back there once in a while to teach them karate. I go, I usually go back once, once a week, depending on my schedule and I teach um, karate there. Excellent. That's fantastic. I love the history that's attached to that. I mean, you're talking about a school mm -hmm. that's been there since the beginning, pretty much, uh, with, of Shotokan. Right, right. That's awesome. So uh, if I understand correctly, so the school is working to preserve the original works and the teachings of, of Funakoshi. How do you guys do, like, what efforts do you put in to preserve his original art and his teachings, and how does it differ uh, to the Shotokan we see today? Right. Um, I wouldn't say there is, a like, a huge difference. Um, maybe in percentages, it would be, like, 10% or 15%. The, the differences aren't so vast. And um, uh, what we do or what the, the, it's not something I do personally, what the, the teachers, uh, the, at the old, you know, the masters do is um, they would hold weekly um, practices. They're in their like 70s, 60s, but they come together. I think it was every Thursday and they practice the katas, they discuss the bunkai's, like maybe it's this, 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 that. And there is a KO version, or I guess the masters call it the original version <laughs> of the uh, Shotokan katas. So um, the stances are higher, which is something that are seen across um, other universities as well, because Shotokan, the stances are getting lower and lower. So the stances are higher in uh, the KO um, way of doing Shotokan. Um, some of the, the motions um, for katas are different as well, but they're, they're very minor differences. If you do shotokan, you can pick it up, but if you don't do it, I don't think you can um, pick up the differences. It's interesting you said about the stances, because it was um, Funikoshi's son that started introduced the lower mm -hmm. stances, isn't it? Right. So exactly. is his work, he... do they try to preserve his work as well, or is it mainly uh, Gichin Funikoshi's uh, at works? Mm, that's a hard question. I think it's more of Kichin Funakoshi's um, teachings simply because there are still um, direct students that um, Kichin Funakoshi taught that are still alive in Keio. So since those masters are still there, I think the, the younger ones that um, started the practice at, at, a, at, a, at a later stage, you know, doesn't have like a huge <laughs> um, authority over what the uh, Keio Mita Club is going to do. So Right now, it's uh, Gijing Funakoshi, but may maybe later, um, you know, in the future, it might change. So I want I thought there's something really fun that you have on your website about your school and that you offer uh, classes to tourists. So oh, like people yeah. traveling, <laughs> the people traveling to Japan and Tokyo, they get to take a class with you. Can you tell us a little bit about that experience and, and kind of like the, um, uh, the experience that you offer? Sure, sure. Um, I did that before I started this YouTube channel, actually. Um, I used to, it was, in, it was in 2019 when COVID wasn't here yet. So um, I would teach uh, karate for beginners and um, more experienced people. For the experienced people, um, I would like, it's a once in a lifetime experience, you know, coming all the way to Tokyo, it's pretty far from other countries. So I wanted um, them to, you know, 
have a very good experience. So I would um, make everything tailor made. So I will listen to them, you know, listen to their problems, what their background is, and uh, you know, make a full. I think it was a 90 or two minute um, hour lesson to cover up anything that they like. So that's something I did before. You know, uh, after the pandemic, when everything settles down. Um, I hope to restart it because so many people are like, I'm going to go to Japan and see you. So <laughs> I would like to provide yeah. something um, for everybody in the future. I mean, that's such a great experience to be able to travel to Japan and train at a dojo, even if it's for one mm. day, it's at a place like Nimita Dojo. I mean, that's just, so they're not only getting the lesson, they're getting a great historical significance along with it. Right, right. I think the atmosphere is a lot different um, from dojos abroad and the, the etiquette part. And I guess, uh, what, I mean, the Japanese society is built upon like respect and our way of thinking. So just feeling that I think is a great experience. And I travel a lot, so I really appreciate, um, you know, doing something very local. So yeah, I hope to, you know, continue doing something like this. Have you ever had any weird requests from any, from tourists about what they wanted to learn? Weird requests. <laughs> um, weird requests. There have been people that wanted to take photos mainly like and not the lessons <laughs> i mean <laughs> i guess it's okay i mean they're coming for vacation so i mean i would take photos for them and but mainly for the experience class i mean for the um people that already know karate they were looking for the skills and the actual you know i guess they said the karate at their countries is a lot different so they want something more authentic so i mean I would just you know teach what I do normally, and I, it seems like they ha had a great time. So I'll just continue it. <laughs> that that well. sounds fantastic. That really does. From what I understand, with the cultural difference with Japan and say like the West and the USA, there's a great um, emphasis placed on respect for the elders. So if you are in a class, from my understanding, is uh, students really shouldn't question the material or ask the instructor a lot of questions. If there is a student who does have a question about what they're learning, what's the most respectful way for them to, to kind of voice that opinion or try to seek that information? I think, uh, first of all, it really, it really depends on the person. It really depends on the, um, the sensei. And maybe like 50 years ago, that might have been the, the common case where you just cannot ask any questions. But it's 2021 and things, are, and things have changed. Um, I would say uh, the, uh, what we think in terms of questioning somebody is, have you put enough work that you have a question i think i think that's a if that makes sense like if mm -hmm. if the student just goes into class and starts asking questions right away the um teachers would or the older teachers would commonly say how have you practiced at all because if you haven't re re done repetitions at all then i think the questions you ask are going to be very like light and not deep mm -hmm. enough so they um ask you or i think i guess they expect you to work on something that's in front of you and give your 100 percent or 200 percent onto something let's say you do the kihon do the kihon like go get everything out put your focus there and then ask the question i think that's a common way of thinking in the japanese so um if you yeah dama there's a common, I don't, I'm not sure if it's a common saying, but some people say, uh, damatte, damatte yaru, damatte yare yo. It, it's a very forceful way of saying it, but it says, shut up and just do it. <laughs> um, I think, <laughs> I, I think in the back of our heads, uh, a lot of people think that way. And uh, I think there are both pros and cons. You know, the pros are you're going to do the work. The cons are people cannot ask a question like if they're not used to asking questions they just keep on doing something without any doubt and they'll end up going somewhere far away <laughs> like away from the core but yeah i think that's the common um, way of thinking when it comes to questioning here in japan is that say true if they're on the mat versus off the mat like outside the school is it still the same kind of process um i think i think so um the older teachers well, again, it depends on the teacher, but um, the relationship on the mat and off the mat, or I guess in the dojo, out of the dojo, doesn't really change much in, in the, in, for the older um, uh, teachers. It's not like they become casual right away. 
mm-hmm. it, you ha- you still have that respect <laughs> when you're out of the dojo as well. So I I, I think that's how it is. Now, as far as like bunkai, like in Okinawan karate, like especially goju,、oh. there's a heavy focus based on bunkai.、Mm. How is that approached in traditional Shotokan? Um, the the very good schools, the very traditional schools, um, practice the bunkais. But it's also a reality that,、um, like the Olympics are on right now,、um, a lot of the dojos are、um, going into com- competitions more. And I think, you know, if, uh, uh, as a kid, if you don't have competitions, I think the, it's hard to keep up the motivation as well. I think that's、uh, that's also the reality. So、um, the teachers, the teachers know the bunkai, but they spend、um, more time on teaching the the competition、um, aspect of karate. So I think, you know, again, depends on the teacher. But from what I feel, I think most um, uh, schools um, in mainland Japan. I'm not sure about、uh, Okinawa, but mainland Japan focuses on、um, katas and kumite, more experience rather than、uh, bunkai. But again, the the older、um, sensei still practice the bunkai. So when a student,、um, let's say they finish high school, they finish college, and they start. You know, getting interested in the the martial art aspect of karate, then they start getting interested in those aspects. But they they have been training so much that they can just go right into the bunkai without any question. <laughs> It's the second nature the at that point. Right, right, right. So since um the Mita Dojo that you're working with, there's that effort to preserve traditional Shotokan. How prevalent are、uh, Funakoshi's twenty precepts? Is that something that's still as prevalent today as it was、uh, years back? Is that is, are there any that are、uh, have more focus than others in particular? I think it's a lot more emphasized、uh, in the Western、um, countries. I don't know why, but、um, in Japan, you. I don't think a lot of people know all twenty. Like I think they've heard of it, they know the existence of it, but they wouldn't,、uh, you know, know deeply about it. To be honest, I never knew about it since I started this YouTube channel, <laughs> because it's not something we read or we learn in the dojo. There are dojo kuns or like teachings. It's not something so strict as dojo kun. It's just a. Teaching as a human being in in a, in a dojo, like to be respectful or to put in the work, but I, I, it's not something that's verbally said out loud、um, in Japan. But、uh, from from my own perspective,、um, you know, karate ni sente nashi is a very,、um, uh, I guess, well known phrase.、Uh, there is no first attack in karate. I think that's the one in English, and、um, yeah, I think that most. Um, karate ka would know that phrase and has it in his mind, right? Right. That so, would be so the whole、answer. importance on it. So you're saying so the that's interesting that more importance on it. You're saying is more in the Western countries. So do you think it's a matter of the idea is being romanticized more than what it actually was? I slightly feel that yes. Interesting. That's that's actually that、really、romanticized af- aspect.、Um, I think is pretty. That's what I feel as a Japanese, and I think. It's it's meant to be like that because it's a new way of thinking for other countries, but、mm-hmm. for us, it's something that it's not so special. It's not something we just have in the in karate. It's something that we have while living in this country. So there's I don't think there's a huge need for it to be like emphasized so much within just the dojo. Like our parents、mm-hmm. would tell us something similar. <laughs> so that I think that's one, one one of the reasons. Yeah. So it's more of a more of a lifestyle, just a way to live and be、mm. respectful, and that's okay.、Right. That makes that makes a lot of sense, actually. Are there any particular behaviors or unspoken rules that instructors like to see their te-、uh, see their students、uh, do? Well, first, being disrespectful to anybody in a dojo would be one. Maybe the definition of being respectful is different between countries too, but.、Um, Mm, unspoken rules, right? Within the dojo, in the dojo, or out of the dojo. Within, within in, the dojo, like are there any the behaviors、dojo. that? Are, I guess let me rephrase this: Are there any specific initiatives or behaviors that teachers like to see their students do without being told? Like any take any action or say anything, or maybe go over and help another student? Is there anything that's not necessarily taught or instructed to do that instructors like to see? I guess simple things like saying hello to your friend, saying hello to the instructor when you come into the dojo. Or saying goodbye, you know, don't just come in without saying anything. Th- those simple things, like a- as a human being, and、mm-hmm. I guess、uh, for your belongings too,、um, 
if you let's say you you come in with a backpack and you have your doggies and you have your equipments in there um a lot of people or i guess the normal japanese it's not just karate japanese people expect you to put it nicely onto a wall or you know you, you don't just want to throw it on the floor you want it to be nicely placed so and that's something um we think about as a as a, i think i think as, as a japanese and so that's something that uh, sensei would expect you to do without telling you to do but maybe for elementary school kids um the sensei would instruct you on that point but if you're like a high school student i wouldn't want to make my point out on those points because i mean i expect them to do it now, I noticed that you released a video today about watching the Karate Olympics. Uh, you did a live stream, which was pretty cool. Uh, what is the overall um, attitude right now, like in Japan? Like, is, is there a lot of pride that that this karate, uh, or is there any uh, people who don't like it? Like, what's the overall attitude and feelings having karate represented in the Olympics in Japan? Uh, to be honest, the the general audience doesn't know much about karate, so I don't think they care. They don't have any opinions on it, so they don't care. Um, but I think, I mean, it, it started and, you know, seeing some, some people on Twitter, <laughs> they seem to like it. So I guess the general Japanese audience do, are enjoying karate. Um, and for the, the karate practitioners, I, I think a lot of people um, do like um, what's happening and they do have the pride to see in the Olympics. And, I, I, and I've seen, you know, I'm in my, like, I have my half of myself in the international martial art um, world and then half of myself in Japan. So I, I can sense the differences. And it's funny that um, I think there are a lot more negative comments or negative thoughts or not, not thoughts, but negative um, perspective towards Olympic um, karate uh, in, I guess, maybe the States or in English speaking um, countries compared to Japan. And I think that's because um, the Okinawan uh, influence or the the, ori the original karate um, way of thinking is more deeply, um, I guess, intertwined between um, countries abroad and not Japan. Uh, in mainland Japan, uh, there there aren't a lot of people doing Okinawan karate, and most schools are um, mainland Japan karate like Shotokan, Shitoryu, uh, Kyokushin. Kyokushin is big too, but um, I can see, um, you know people, especially in the States, like in the early 1950s, you know, people started going from Okinawa to the States, Hawaii, California, doing Shorinryu. Shorinryu isn't so big in, in Japan, but a lot of people, I think, do Shorinryu um, in the States. So that was something that's very surprising for me. So having said that, um, since more people, I'm not sure if it's more, I don't know the absolute number, but since I feel like more people um, in English speaking countries knows about the Okinawan Karate, they can make a comparison. And I think thus they have, some people you know, have a negative you know, comment about Olympic Karate. If someone is looking for a good Shotokan school, uh, can you give any recommendations or signs or things that they should ask that they might not know to ask for? If you can see the sensei doing a kata or kumite, I think that's the best indication um, to how far you can go within that school. If, if the sensei doesn't, um, or if it, it, it doesn't have to be a full kata, within the lesson, if you can see the sensei move full speed, um, I think that's the best um, way to, um, to see if he um, has a good school or not. I guess maybe if he, even if he is good at um, delivering or explaining things, if he can't show it um, with his own body, then it's gonna be very hard to imagine what he's talking about so i would say that's one aspect and if uh, and if you don't have any karate experience to to you know to evaluate if his movements are good or not then i would say <clears throat> if they allow you to take a video i don't know maybe that's a sensitive <laughs> thing but if they allow you to, to take a video take it back home there are tons of videos on youtube so just compare and see if you like it or not. That would be my answer. And that's what I would do if I were to start any other martial arts. So what is your favorite thing about teaching karate? And do you have any particular goals that you're striving to achieve? Uh, well, in Japan, um, since I coach at a, a middle school and high school, um, it's different from teaching at a karate school. In karate school, your role, your main role is to teach karate. But in, I teach at a school 
So it's like half education, half karate. So my goal is、uh, within the three years or six years,、um, middle school and high school, I hope to、um, have the kids grow up that so that when they graduate, they know about themselves. Like they can, they know about their own character. They understand what they like, what they don't like, and that's something that they understand throughout having those difficulties. Uh, doing karate, you know, working with the teammates,、um, aiming for that one tournament,、um, you know, those those kind of things. So that's what I feel as an instructor、um, in Japan, and as a I guess a karate content creator and、um, someone that somebody that teaches、uh, people abroad. My goal is to、um, have people understand the wide aspect of karate. There are both, you know, the Okinawan side,、um, the Japanese side, and recently I never knew karate、um, like branched out so much <laughs>、um, across the world. So I'm starting to become interested in those, and yeah, I just hope to, since I cannot, you know, have them face to face, I can't really deliver the skills. Um, well, um, I can't deliver the skills as much as. You know, if I were to see them every day in Japan, so the, the education side, or I guess not the education, but the the knowledge side, is、uh, is bigger, I think, for the international audience. So there's two sides of me. That's fantastic. Well, so far you've done a fantastic job. Big fan <laughs> of your channel. You've you've been putting out a lot of great videos, and I definitely appreciate your efforts to spread the knowledge. You know, there's just so many channels out there that that they talk bad about the martial arts, but I like the positive、uh, energy that you put out, and I like the exploration. And I just want to say thank you so much for taking part today、oh, and no, no. <laughs> sharing your experience with us. It's it's been an honor to have you on today. Thank you so much for having me. I want to extend an extreme thank you, Sensei, for spending the time to talk with us and sharing your perspectives of karate that many of us don't get to see. Be sure to check out Yusuke's channel as for the discussion we talked about comparing American Kempo to traditional karate, and you can find those episodes on his channel. He also has a lot of phenomenal content exploring the martial arts, and he will be returning next week to talk about this exploration and his experience with karate around the world. So click on that bell notification and set your reminders to come back and check that out. As an exclusive episode for our Patreon subscribers and YouTube memberships, I talk with Sensei in a special off the mat interview. That's a, that's a very funny question. It's so weird to be talking about this, but visit us on Patreon or click the join button below for access.